In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to manage your pages in Google Sites, in the new Google Sites. Now, I'm demonstrating this with a traditional web quest and all of its subsequent pages, but the skill of reordering your pages or nesting your pages is the same regardless of whichever project you're working on. However, once again, I am uh, going to be looking at a web quest as a uh, an instructional piece here. So we know as part of the web quest, you've got your home page, your introduction, your task process, evaluation, conclusion, credits, and teacher page. I have little sample items of those all labeled here so that you can see them. And sitting over here, I have um, my initial web quest set up. Sorry, doing some goofy things there. Um, so here I see the home introduction task, et cetera. But oftentimes when we are talking about a web quest, we are developing a fair amount of content. And one of the things we want to be cautious about on any project is overwhelming our users. If we had web pages that were too long, our students would get frustrated with having to come back time and time again and locate the place that they had to leave off at, as well as most people will not scroll down to find content information. So shorter chunks is always better. Um, as a requirement for many of the projects that you do for me, I do ask you to chunk your site. So very typically in a web quest specifically, you're going to chunk the process into pages that are unique for each role. So if you had say three roles as a part of your process, you would have to have a page for each of those roles. I'm just gonna squeeze this up so you can see the whole thing. Likewise, um, from your process page, if you jump to a role, and you determine that there's additional content that needs to be separated out onto a separate page, then you're going to do that as well. It may be that you have content that is common to all of your roles, in which case you may um, end up setting up a link that goes um, from every page over to this new content page. It all really depends on the roles and what kind of things you're setting up, whether or not you would um, have additional content pages. But certainly the roles themselves, the individual roles themselves should have their own individual page. Likewise, you may have a page that is exclusive to the group process or the group project. And so this might also be a part of the um, process page. Um, and you don't necessarily need to go directly from the group process, excuse me, from the process page right down to the group project. You could also link the group project page off of the uh, individual roles. So you have a fair amount of flexibility here. And what determines how you do that are your students, are your audience. If you feel like your students can handle having all of the links up top here and they can just jump around, then you're going to allow them to go directly to the group project page. If you feel that they need to have a very linear sequential pattern, then you might go from the process page to role one. And then from role one, you might jump to the group page. Again, it all depends on how you choose to do this. The point of this particular tutorial is that I'm here showing you how to add additional pages. So back here in Google Sites, I've got my um, pieces laid out here across the top and other tutorials are going to speak to how to do some more decorative fancy things. This is specifically on how to deal with the pages. So I know as an example here, because I've got these roles one, two, and three, and they should be named specifically speaking now to the web quest, they should be named appropriately. Um, but I need to add at minimum three pages here, and then I'm gonna add a group project page as well. So I can go ahead and click back over here to my Google sites. I'm gonna to go to pages, and now I'm going to click on my plus button, and um, I'm going to um, 
be fairly verbose in terms of what these look like. Here, this is expert one. Here, this is expert two. I would never actually create a web quest with just these names. I can go back and change them later, but for the sake of this example uh, tutorial, I'm just going to um, name them for what they function as. And I'm going to do one for the group project. So in essence, these expert one, two, and three are the individual tasks for the individual roles. And then here's the group project page. And you can see that it's laying out here at the top of my menu. Now, one of the things I can do, of course, is I can rearrange these things. Um, I can bring the process to the top here. I can move my expert to the top here, etc. However, what I really, really want, first of all, I'm going to put my introduction back to where it belongs. I'm going to put my task back to where it belongs. Oops. Notice the difference between um, where I'm dropping this. So if I'm dropping this, notice that I'm, in order to rearrange it, I'm getting to the single line in between. So I'm getting to the single line in between. Now, in terms of the process, that would come next. And so now I've got my home introduction task process, expert one, two, three, group project. And this makes sense from the standpoint of perhaps a logical flow. But on my menu, I don't want this expert one, two, and three in group project to be shown on the menu, mainly because it is part of the process. So I can do a couple of things to help that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take a look at this option. I can click on the drop down and I can click on hide from navigation. And so that goes away. I can also see over here that it looks like a little eye with a little slash through it. And that's okay to remove it from the menu. But that's not quite what I want to do either. I'm going to drop down and I'm going to click on show in navigation. What I really want it to do is I want it to nest under the word process. So I want my users to be able to click on the word process, but then right below it, I want them to click on the word expert one, expert two, expert three, depending on what uh, role they're playing. To make that happen, I'm going to click on the expert one page and I'm going to drag it so it's on top of, not above, not below with the line, but directly on top of the process and watch what happens to the process menu. Notice that it immediately dropped a little sub menu in there. It also indented it over here. I'm gonna go ahead and do those very quickly. And once I've gotten them in here, I may have to rearrange them a little bit. Uh, expert one, I'm going to drag that to the top here. Expert one, two, and three. And now I'm going to put my group process in there. Totally missed it. So group process. Okay. So now I can see that my menu's back, but now I've got my expert one, two, three, and my group process. So this is what you need to do in order to set up your sub pages. Note that you may also choose to set up sub pages for your evaluation. Um, you may choose to set up additional content pages that may not be necessarily linked from the menu itself, but rather only from the um, role pages or the evaluation pages or um, any other kind of pages that you have. Not everything needs to be on the menu. The menu needs to be structured in a logical fashion that makes it easy. The next thing I want to point out is if I click on process, it takes me to the process page. However, we do want to um, be very explicit to our end users. And within the body of this, this should be the introduction to your, ta uh, excuse me, your process page. Um, for example, here in the template, I might say something like pick um, or I might say your teacher will assign one of the roles. And so here I'm going to say expert one, expert two, 
expert three. And so on this master process page, you do want to go ahead and list the different roles and you might list the group exercise as well. And you want to highlight this and hyperlink it to that page. So here, what you're going to do is you're going to, I'm going to actually have to scroll down, pardon me. I like that. And now I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find my expert one page and apply it. And similarly, I'm going to do my expert two page and apply it, etc. And then you're going to obviously do the same thing for your expert three. So anything that is on this page that links out to another page or should direct them to another page, you want to hyperlink. So in addition to having the hyperlink drop out, drop down up here, you should also have it available on this page over here. And of course, at the end of it all, you should publish it and you should double check your work. Um, so that wraps up this particular tutorial on how to nest and rearrange your pages. This applies again to any type of Google sites. This uh, tutorial has been specific to your WebQuest, but again, same concept for any of your sites. Hope it helped.